Hey, everybody, and welcome to Viewpoint Christian Academy for another Monday Moments, where we talk about all things Christian education. I'm Dr. Adam Rondo, the Director and Principal of Viewpoint, and I am here to discuss with you today some keys to success in our online program. If you'll remember last week in our, in our previous session episode, we discussed some really uh, important keys to success in the paper curriculum. What things do you need to do? Well, today we're going to give you a few keys for success in our online program as well. Here at Viewpoint, we are committed to empowering parents for Christian education. And we want to help you provide a good quality Christian education to your child in your home or in your learning pod or in a learning center, wherever you are. We want to be there to help and support that. So stay tuned as we talk today about how to successfully implement our online program. So as you can see, I've got a bit of a different setup than I generally do. And the reason for that is I'm gonna be switching back and forth between the computer and the camera. I'm gonna to talk to you and I'm gonna show you on, on the screen exactly how uh, you can do some of the things that I'm about to suggest and to show you. So I'm gonna give you three tips today on how to work with the Ignition program. Now, the beauty of our Ignition program is that it is completely and totally automated, right? Everything is calculated and scored in all of these various aspects for you. In fact, the only thing that isn't automatically scored for you in the Ignition program would be things like essay questions where the student has to write out their own answer or a project where they have to write a report or an essay or something along that lines. But other than that, everything is really automated. It's very efficient. It's very accurate. It's very, um, uh, it, it, it's, it's very responsive. And so I want to show you three things, though. Uh, in our in our system are three tips to help you really get the most out of the program, help you get help your child to get the most out of uh, of their work in our ignition program. So number one is we need you to continue. Now this is this is kind of a separate note. It's not exactly the same as we have been doing, but with the paces, one of the things that we said in our video was uh, in in all of our videos is you have to use those vision cards. Let me tell you something. Vision cards are key for working with the Ignition program as well. It is really important that every day a child look at the assignments that they have due and write them on their goal card. It's so, so vital. How would you do that? I'm going to show you how to do that. And that's really where number one comes in. We're going to start with our number one tip, and that is to every day visit the courses tab. The first tip for success in our program is to every day visit the courses tab. Let's jump over and take a look at what things look like in the courses tab. Let's see. So here we are in the very first page, the front page of Ignitia. And this particular student hasn't yet unchecked the box here that says, uh, you know, you don't have to show me that video every time. But this video does a really good introduction to everything. If you've never watched this video, I would highly encourage you you to do so. But there's a tab up here at the light bulb called learning. We're going to hit this button at learn, and then we're going to notice there are two tabs here. Most people, because it defaults to the assignment, most people just look through the assignments and say, oh, okay, here's what I've got. This is what's due on what days. Here I am. I'm looking here. This student's doing pretty good. Uh, the, nothing is indicated as being behind. Uh, if it would, if there was an indication of behind, this would be in like orange. Uh, if they were, if they weren't on track, say, oh, okay, well, everything looks pretty good. This page, however, is really only helpful for quick links. The real work takes place here in the courses tab. And mom and dad, coach, whoever it is that's helping the child, you need to go to this courses tab every day. You need to have the child take you to the courses tab. Once you go to the courses tab, you're going to immediately be confronted with some data. And it's really important data. Let's look at this child's work, okay? Okay. The first thing we notice is that here in the Bible course, we can see a current overall score for the curse. Wow, that's a course. Wow, that's great. It's good to see. Good to see that great A average there. All right, way to go. And this one's a B plus. This one's uh, about an A plus almost. We got another B uh, and another B plus. So, okay, great. Good to see that. Now, the score to date, the current score of the score to date, these are going to match. 
But I want you to take a notice of something right here. Look at this, the assignments remaining. There are 103 out of 146 assignments. And there are 103 days remaining in the calendar year for the ignition program. What does that tell you? Every day they're gonna do one assignment. So you kind of see how this works, right? This is some really basic math. This button here tells me if they're on track or if they're ahead. If they were behind, it would be orange or red. It would be red mostly if they were behind. So oh, they're one behind on, again, that's the, the schedule that Ignition builds. How, where do you see all this? In the courses view. And not only that though, you have to not only just look at the overview, it's also really important that you click on the subject every day as well. Do it with your child. Say, okay, show me courses. Go to the courses tab and show me your work. Now you can see from this that they have, this student has successfully completed three units and is on their fourth for the year. Again, we're in, in, uh, we're in the month of November in the, in the school year at this point. So they're on, they're doing it. They're moving along at a good clip and doing really well. Okay. This particular student. And you can also see here everything that has been done and yet what needs to be done. And here you can see actually the grade for each lesson. You can see a score. You can see what's coming up when. You can kind of make a plan ahead. And that's where you grab that vision card and you say, okay, today this is what you need to do. Also keep in mind that tomorrow you'll have to do this or just looking to the future, looking ahead. You can even go back and look at what was done and how it turned out, et cetera. All of that information is right here. You can even go forward and say, oh, at the very end of the year, you're going to look at revelation and review. And you can even see when it's anticipated that this child, will, your child will finish and how much work they will need to do, et cetera. This is, a, this is the most important part of Ignition. And mom and dad, you need to see it every day. You need to come here and open, have with your child, open it up and look at everything. Are they on track? Do they have any lessons that have, now look, this student is okay because every lesson is 100%, right? And every quiz is 80% or better. But if you look at your child, you see that they didn't get 100% on a lesson, well, then you need to address, help them address that. Say, oh, what do we need to do here? If they didn't get an 80% or better on a quiz, talk to them. What do we need to do here? Well, let's talk about that. Let's talk about that though. Now that you know exactly how to check up on them, and again, we, we said you have to touch the paces every day, pick them up and look them over. We can't touch the ignition course, but you can open it up in courses and check out courses every day. Check out courses, check the courses. It is so vital. It is so important. If your child comes to you and says, yeah, I finished all my work. You say, okay, go to courses and show me what you did today. They'll even be a date on it to show you when, when it was done. It will say submitted date graded date, all of those kind of things. If you happen to see a yellow exclamation mark next to something, that means that it's waiting on a teacher to have it graded. Now, we talked about the fact that every day they need to get 100% on their lessons and or 80% or better on their quizzes. That follows our mastery model, right? And, and how do we do that? If the student attempts, now the student has three attempts on their lesson. After three attempts, it will stop them from reattempting until the teacher grants them access back in. Why do we only do three attempts? Well, we've addressed this before, but the idea is that many times there will be four part multiple choice questions. One, two, three, four, right? In order to keep the student from just blindly guessing, we wanna make sure that they are actually researching, going back into the lesson and trying to attempt to understand the material and answer the questions accurately. So after three attempts, if they don't have the 100% on their lesson that they need, they need to ask or request for another uh, attempt. Now, eventually, if they're again, if they're in our, if they're in our teacher assistive online program, eventually we'll catch up to it. We'll figure it out. Oh, hey, wait a minute. They, they didn't get 100% on that and we will do it. However, if the child is going to succeed, they should not be waiting for the teacher to reassign any uh, extra attempts that are required. They should be requesting those extra attempts to answer those questions. How does that work? I'm glad you asked. Let's take a look and see how that works. All right, so here we are in the courses tab again, and we are going to examine each, uh, we're gonna examine this student's work. And we're gonna look at the most current unit that they are working on. And we're gonna look at a lesson, and let's pretend here that this lesson, it says 100%, but let's pretend that it was not a 100%. And they had some questions that were incorrect. 
Now, up top here, uh, the questions that are incorrect will be marked with a red X. If it's a green check, it's been scored and it's correct. If it's a red X, it is not correct as of yet. If it's a yellow line mark, it means it's partially correct. So in this particular section, let's say that this student, and we're going to pretend here for a second, and we're just going to, uh, we're going to, we're going to uh, draw on here for one second and say, this one was wrong. And we'll get a red X. Let's put a red X uh, on this one and say, yeah, they got that one wrong. Okay. So if it's wrong, if it's incorrect, what should they do? Well, at that very question where they, where it was incorrect, they need to come to the ask for help button. It is vital that they ask for help. And here they will simply open it up and send a message to the teacher that says something like this. May I please try this again? And once they send that message, the teacher will see it within a short period of time and they will respond and they will do one of two things. They will immediately open it up for them and say, yes, you may try again. And once it's opened up, it will immediately show here in the assignments page that this lesson is now available for you to try again, as well as in the courses view, uh, they would be able to see that as well. So once they send that message and it has been opened up, they'll be able to go back in and attempt the answer once again. In fact, the teacher may also send another help note uh, to this child uh, in, in their work. And if they do that, then it is important that the child read it. If a help message has been sent, what will happen is the, the, this note will turn red. Instead of a blue scent, it will then become a red scent. The red scent button means that the teacher has sent a note to the, to the, to the child and they, they should always read those notes. I want you to notice up here, anytime there is a message, we're going to look at some messages here, uh, a new message, this child, it is very important that the child read that message. And oftentimes it will give help information and have a link for them to be able to go back to that particular question. Let's go ahead and check this one out on this quiz, right? Uh, this teacher is letting them know some helpful information about a question that they didn't get right on the quiz so that they can learn that going forward. And again, right here is a red, it, it would be red if it hadn't been red yet, there would be a red note in that particular area. You can kind of see how the, the teacher is able to interact in that way and also to send messages to the child. Furthermore, um, in addition to that, uh, when the child is in there or the student is in their schoolwork, and we'll go back to the math here, and uh, we, will, uh, we will look at something here because the teacher can also leave additional notes. Let's go to the lesson uh, where we were at. And we will take a look, but I wanted you to notice this right here, that the teacher note is available to the student. The teacher can actually leave notes. And if you open it, there's helpful information there as well. We can point out things. We do that all the time. We leave notes next to graphs or we leave notes next to paragraphs and say, this will help you. The, the student should be aware of that. If we leave a red note in here, chances are we're going to send a help note that says something like, see the red note for help. So sending notes and reading notes is extremely important in regards uh, to working with our Ignition program. So you have to check the courses every day and you have to work the help notes. And those help notes go both ways, right? It's important that the students send a help note to the teacher when they need it. And, and that goes for quizzes too. If they don't get their 80% or better on the quiz, they need to ask the teacher for another attempt because they get two, we'll get to, they get two attempts on a quiz. If they don't get it right after that, then they need to study and then ask for another help using the help notes. Those are really important. So two really important tips. And they need to read all the notes that are sent. Oftentimes, sometimes the teachers get very frustrated because we will send notes with help. And even sometimes we will give the student the correct answer to help them out. And they'll still continue to put the same wrong answer because they aren't reading the notes that we send them. So it's really vital that they send notes and read notes. Both of those are key. Now, the third help that I wanna give you today, as far as Ignition goes, is taking study notes. Ignition quizzes, 
can be are, are, are challenging on purpose. Ignition quizzes, quizzes are challenging on purpose. Why do I say challenging on purpose? Well, I say they're, they're challenging on purpose because the purpose of the quiz is to really test the student to see if they comprehended the concepts that were presented in the lessons. So there's material, the videos, the audio, all of those things in the lesson material, then the problems that are work to ensure mastery of that material, followed by an immediate uh, quiz after every two or three lessons, there'll be a quiz and all of the concepts combined in those lessons will then be quizzed. Well, if a student struggles with the quiz after the first attempt, they should immediately go back into the material and study before attempting it the second time. Now, when a student does a quiz the first time, they will not be shown whether or not it is correct or, or incorrect. They will only be shown a grade. If they get an 80% or better, they're good to go. They can move on and they will be able to go in and see which answers were correct, which were not. But if they get below that 80%, they're not going to be able to go back and see what was wrong. So before going back into the quiz that second time, they should go back into the lessons, study the questions that they didn't know because they already saw all the questions. The questions aren't going to change. If they weren't sure about how to answer a math problem or if they weren't sure about how to answer a particular question about that Greek culture or a particular question about the explorers or a particular question about how cells function, and et cetera, so on and so forth, then they should write down on a piece of paper while they're taking the quiz, a little note that says, look up who discovered America. <laughs> no, I know, we know probably Christopher Columbus, easy question, but I'm just giving you an example. Oh, I forgot who that was. Write it down so that afterwards you can go back into the lesson, look it up so that when it's time to take the quiz the second time, all you have to do is go back through and say, I knew that, I knew that. Oh, that's right. I looked that one up and just fix them because you have already attempted it once. You've seen that you didn't quite get it all right. Go back and review. Now, if you have trouble even after the second time and you don't get that 80%, it's going to stop you from progressing any further. And what you'll need to do at that point is open up the quiz. And let's show you real quickly. You'll need to open up that quiz. How? First, you go to quizzes. After quizzes, you go to the particular course that you need to see. You open up. I'm going to go to an old unit here. You open up the course and look for that quiz. Here it is, this quiz. And... It's going to show, now this had an 80% or better, but after you take it the second time, it's going to show you which answers were correct, which answers were incorrect. And you should, at that point, uh, if it's less than an 80%, write down the question on a separate piece of paper so that you can go back into the lesson, look it up, and write the answer down on your notes. What will the note-taking process do? Well... That note-taking process is key to reinforcing study habits and the correct answers. And it's really going to help the student as they search for the material to lock that information into their mind and help them to show success on the test and to get a better overall unit grade. So again, what are our three tips for today? One, live in that courses tab. Check out courses every day. Check out every lesson in course, every subject in courses every day. Mom and dad, you can see it. You can look at it. And number two, take advantage of the two-way street of help notes. One, send the help notes when you need to. And two, always read the help notes when they come through. And number three, study and no study notes. Take study notes. When you're doing quizzes, especially if you take notes of the questions that you got wrong and look up the correct answers, it's going to bump up your grades incredibly, increase your comprehension, and help you to do better overall in your academics. I hope these three things have been a help to you. If you have any questions, please don't hesitate to reach out to us. We are here to help. We are here to serve. It's our privilege to do so. God bless you. If you like this video, give it a thumbs up. Tell somebody about the good things God is doing in Christian education right now. Maybe send them to Viewpoint. If we can help them, we'd love to. Take care. God bless.